I plan to use the oscilloscope today for measurements, and since Lionel post-war trains for the most part fall into alternating current circuits, I'd like to cover the basics of sine waves. As an example, what you see before you on the oscilloscope screen is the output of a Lionel ZW transformer. In front of you, colored black, is a poorly drawn sine wave. On the y-axis, we have voltage. On the x-axis, we have time. The two most important aspects of the sine wave for our purposes will be the root mean square voltage, or VRMS, and the frequency of the sine wave. First, let's discuss the sine wave amplitude, which some people may refer to the peak-to-peak -peak voltage. That is the voltage from one crest to the preceding trough. Some people may refer to the peak voltage. That is one half the value of the peak to peak voltage. But what we're interested in is the root mean square value, VRMS, which happens to be equal to the peak voltage divided by the square root of two. The second item we want to understand is the frequency of the sine wave. Frequency by definition is how many times something oscillates in a single second. We can't measure the frequency directly on the oscilloscope, but we can measure the wavelength. The wavelength, which is denoted by the Greek letter lambda, is the amount of time it takes for a single oscillation. The frequency is then simply 1 divided by the wavelength. Note that the wavelength has units of seconds and that the unit for frequency is in hertz. Before I sign off, I like to discuss superposition of sine waves. This is important to us because the signal from the ECU should be superimposed upon the signal from the transformer if everything is working properly. And before testing the ECU one with my ZW transformer, uh, it may be instructional to go over what should happen. Um, okay, here on the computer screen, I have a mathematics program called Octave uh, that I use fairly often. For those of you familiar with MATLAB from the MathWorks company, this is essentially the same thing, um, with the exception you do not need a license. Okay, for uh, this demonstration, um, I'm going to start off by creating a time interval. It's going to start at zero. Uh, it's going to increment by um, 100 nanoseconds and it's going to be 1 60th of a second long. And the reason I'm choosing that is because that will give us a full um, oscillation of a 60 hertz wave. Uh, you know, come to think of it, I, I think I'm going to change it to, to get two full oscillations. So that will be um, 1 30th of a second. We should get two full oscillations. Okay. Um, so that is our time interval. Now we need to actually create our sine waves. First, let's create one for the ZW. Uh, the ZW will be a low frequency wave. We'll give it an eight volt amplitude. And then the frequency, of course, will be 60 Hertz. And let's go ahead and plot this just to make sure everything looks the way we expect it to look. Um, there you see our two full oscillations and you will notice it has an 8 volt peak which is what we expected. Um, so far looks good. Uh, let's go ahead and create a waveform for our ECU1 and this will be a high frequency waveform. We'll give it an amplitude of 3 volts. And the frequency we'll use is 250 kilohertz. And let's go ahead and plot that. ECU, HF. And there you go. We have got a nice big blue square. Okay. Um, a few things worth noticing. The amplitude is three, like we expected. The time base, uh, it goes, here you can read this, it's between 0.03 and 0.035. Well, that's exactly the same we see on our previous plot. 
So the time, the time length is right, the time interval is right, the voltage is right. We just don't see our sinusoid. And the reason is because this sine wave is oscillating at 250 kilohertz per second. It's oscillating very fast. So if we zoom in very, very close, we should see some sine waves. And let's try that real quick. Let's see if we can zoom in. Uh, looks like we need to zoom in further. And there you go. You can actually see um, the sine waves. So that looks good. And we're going to put this off to the side as well. And now, uh, this, this is the part where we do the superposition. Um, so superposition is simply mathematically adding those two waveforms together. And that's exactly what the uh, ECU1 transmitter is designed to do. It's, it's designed to put this waveform on top of the other waveform. And so mathematically here, we're just simply going to add these two um, waveforms. It's easy enough. ECU. And let's go ahead and plot it. And, well, let, let's just see what happens. There you go. Um, this is the two waveforms. This is the ECU high frequency waveform superimposed upon the lower frequency ZW waveform. Uh, you can see the lower frequency 60 hertz signal, but it looks kind of blurry. Um, if you zoom in on that waveform, you will notice what we saw before, which is that there is a sine wave there, uh, and that's the high frequency. So this single plot consists of both waveforms, both the ZW 60 hertz waveform and the ECU 250 kilohertz waveform. All right, so that's it for superposition. And with any luck, we'll see something exactly like this when we test our ECU one in conjunction with the ZW transformer.